Welcome back. We're racing Auto Club once again. Practice number two um, on Monday night. Race tomorrow. So jumping in doing last practice before um, the league race. But everybody just qualified. Let's do a rundown of the field and a few. But Auto Club once again tonight. Up the field. Did a few changes with it. Um, and tested out something for the broadcast. Something for me to adjust cameras and do a few new things. And I could go like, ooh, gearbox and blimp cam and a few other things. So hopefully it'll make the streams uh, and things like that a little bit nicer. Try to just finick with it and mess with it um, right now. But we're going to get lined up and ready to roll here. I guess I'll do the starting grid now. We got JD on the pole. He ended up running a 40.50. You got Nick to his outside with a 5.55, five, five. so half a tenth, not too bad. And Brandon Bass, he's going to be third with a 6.14. Clay with a 6.42, and then Jeremy Horn with a 6.44. Four. So all them three within uh, three hundredths of each other, or three thousandths of each other. Um, and then Chad's going to be sixth, Clayton seventh, Anthony Brady eighth and ninth. Timothy going to round out the top ten. Mike Presley, Austin Albritton, Joey Keneally, Ted Deckard, Colin, Austin Baker, and then we'll be seeing the 92 of Dustin Carroll. He ran with us last night. He was up at the front, so expecting him to see there or be up there at the end. Um, then Brian Wasserman, Anthony Benda, Thomas Laverde, Stephen Grinnell, and that'll be it for the field. So you see him rolling off now. It's going to be a stacked field tonight. I'm expecting a lot of these cars to be mixing it up. It was pretty racy last night, but I think it'll mix up a lot more tonight. It's going to be pretty crazy, and that's not even the league race yet. So it's not even Tuesday night, so it'll be getting to the point where these boys are going to be going at it, and I'm excited to be watching this field roll off. You see quite a few cars um, are in it. 20 cars starting this feature tonight. This main, a lot of guys with the league banners on and a few new paint schemes on. I know Nick running that uh, Beatty and Sanders truck, I believe. Uh, if we take a look at it, I think that's what it is. No, it's his shoe emporium. Doug started that so his shoe emporium but here we go we're gonna be getting ready to roll here 75 laps tonight stage break at 25 here we go pace car dips off here they go into the restart now Nick and JD taking for the green Austin He's going to go around the outside of everybody. That should be a black flag. Um, yeah, so what he got a big jump. Uh, is it here? A few cars asking. He got a big jump and just went around the outside of everybody. That you cannot do. So I'm assuming he'll get a penalty. You see JD in the middle. He's loose. But Nick on that top side. Everybody's loose back here. Everybody loose. Cones are flying in the air. Blue cones all over the place. You see Clayton a little bit slow down the back stretch. But Nick's he's going to take the lead on the back straight away on lap number one. Everybody running a pretty nice line. You see the three of Brandon, Brandon Bass. He was loose there on that bottom lane. But they're all going to single file out now. Got three Everett Motorsports trucks up in the front. And we have a yellow. Have to go back and see what happened on that one. Not for sure, but um, if we go back and see... Uh, it looked like it was 13, possibly. Yeah, 13, get a little bit loose. He gets into the back of the 79. He just spins the 79 around. Um, not a good start for Clayton. He ends up causing the first one, and you saw the, I believe that was, not sure who that, I think it was the 92. Yes, you see right here, he ended up spinning from that. He got a little bit loose. Um, actually, almost, I think he hit the pit barrels. He got a black flag for it, almost. Locking up the brakes. Just touched it just a little bit. No harm, no foul, but we're going to re-rack him 
and go at it once again. Alrighty, gonna be coming back to the green now. Um, gonna line it back up, get going green. We're gonna have Nick and Austin Albritton leading the field. Austin ran with us. He'll be able to run a little bit later in the season um, with scheduling issues, but he'll be able to run the league races and things like that in it. So we're gonna have uh, Everett Motorsports truck leading the field. We're gonna have two snorkel squad drivers in uh, second and third. Another Everett Motorsport truck in fifth and sixth. Clay, he's up at the fourth, so we're going to get him lined up, and we're coming back to the green now. Everybody anticipating the uh, anticipating this restart, but here they go. Getting ready for it. Pace car pulls off. Back into the restart zone they go, and they're underway. Nick gets a pretty good restart there. He's going to end up leading it by quite a few car lengths the 54 he does not get going and he checks up a lot of the field everybody's going to try to go around him see the 51 he got messed up by that he ended up going you got the snorkel squad team owner and that 10 down below he's looking to make some moves on that bottom lane jd just stuck in this middle pack but as we go back up to the front it's going to be three wide down the back stretch for second see nick pulling a lead got an everett motorsports snorkel squad and Clay on that outside. Clay's gonna file out back behind him. Brady to the bottom, you got one spinning in the back. That's gonna be the 85 and they're wrecking big out the back. That's gonna be a yellow. Big, big wreck now. Let's go back and see what happened on that one. Entering the corner. Um, just slow it down just a little bit. You see the 85, he's on the door of the 51 and he maybe gets loose, over corrects right into the 50. Four, and the 54 goes in the wall pretty hard. You see the 85, he ends up bouncing back off of the wall and into traffic right in front of the 20, the 10. Big hits for those guys. Um, trying to interview a few of those. I know uh, the 10, he's new. Um, Anthony Benda, he is new uh, in the league, so call him Sweeter. But glad to have him in here. Colin, he got involved in that one, so we'll see who's all going to pit, what's going on with it now. Um, unfortunate for the ones that were caught up in that one. You know, JD didn't have the restart he wanted and ended up uh, costing him. Let's go back on that restart and see. You see, he just didn't get a great restart. That's kind of all that happened. He just mistimed it, maybe missed a shift right in front of Chad. Nowhere for Chad to go. Anthony, Mike, they all checked up big, and it cost them. And he was just in that uh, in that drama and not doing so good. But Nick out front, he's leading this thing. Let's go ahead and interview him. Nick got you up in the booth. Nick doing pretty good right now. Only a few laps into the race, but had a bunch of yellows. Kind of the opposite of what's happened uh, last night. Talk to us a little bit about your thoughts and your teammate working your, his way up into second place. But talk about your thoughts throughout this race so far? Uh, I don't know. It kind of sucks so far. Everyone's been wrecking. A uh, person took it three while and started, which I know he didn't read the rules, but whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just run it, practice race, have fun. Uh, hopefully we can get this Nick Shoe rent shoe Rental Emporium uh, Ford F-150 into victory lane. Definitely going to be watching you. What is, uh, I know you said obviously this is a practice race and it is. Uh, what are you trying to kind of focus on or what's your team trying to focus on and get better at uh, for Tuesday's race? Uh, I guess saving tires would be the big one. A couple of our guys definitely struggle with that. I know I do occasionally. And uh, just not making mistakes, not hitting the wall, stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, just, just being good in general. All righty. Well, best luck to you. Hopefully uh, see you here at the end. Yep. Nick Sipple taking the lead pretty early in this race. Started P number two. He's up one spot. But some of the biggest movers, we got Austin Albritton up nine after the restart. Brian Wasserman up 12. The five, Thomas Laverde, he's up 11 spots. So a lot of cars making big ground now. But um, doesn't none of them are up fully to the front. A few double digits as you can see in the bottom left. But... No, Brady's gained a lot of spots. 
He's up seven, and he's made his way to second. Got his teammate on the inside, so you know they're going to be working together. You got uh, Chad out two rows behind him. All righty, pace car lights are out. We're going to go green once again this time on lap number eight. Coming to nine, two Everett Motorsports cars uh, going to be leading the field. You got Austin Albritton third, Clay fourth, Brandon Bass. I think that might be one of his sons racing, actually, so he's doing pretty good for his first time. And then Chad on the outside line. We're going to go on board with him and watch this restart from what Chad sees uh, and kind of take a look at it and watch what's going to go on during this restart. Got his two teammates on the front row in the restart zone, and they're away. Hey, uh, can you race the soldier for a minute? i got to take the dog out. Uh, okay. We'll have to race control it, as you hear from Doug, but Chad with a good restart. He's going to be all over the back bumper. See, he's a little tight, actually. He's going to wash up to that outside, and there's going to be a yellow. Yellow is out once again. Uh, go back and see what happened there. That was the 20, the 85, ooh, the 23. 23 ended up turning. That was the 23 of Grinnell. He ends up just driving to the back of... I believe that was the 20 and he caused that one so the 23 drives in the back of the 85 as we see and it turns him into the 20 and then they wreck from there so that one's gonna have to be on the 23 alrighty we're ready to roll once again I'm gonna be lap 12 restarting on still got the pretty much the same field uh, for this restart as the last one ended up Booting the 23 said something in chat, I believe, so he ended up getting booted. But we're getting ready to go back green here. You see pace car dipping off into the research zone. There they go. Underway once again here at Auto Club. See Austin Albright, and he's going to go up the track and try to side draft Brady on this restart. See how well that works out for him. But you got Brandon Bass. He's on that bottom lane. He's going to try to be... That's actually... Uh, Joey Keneally, my bad. I keep saying that's uh, Brandon with the three, but Austin Albright, he's going to be underneath Nick down this back straightaway. He's going to be clear down the back straightaway. They're going to be racing hard into turn number three. Nick's going to go back underneath them. Into three and four. Brady to the top. Nick to the bottom. Austin him in the middle. Then that third Everett Motorsports truck in that 51, he's looking to make something happen. We might get four wide down the front straightaway, and they're wrecking the 19. He gets in the back of the three. Didn't see what happened there, but yellow is out. We'll go back and look at it. Not for sure. Ooh, they're still wrecking coming back up across the track. Go back and see. You see the 19, he gets way loose. Comes down into the three. No word for Joey Keneally to go. Ends up getting wiped out in it. Um, and then that actually involved the 28 and I believe that was the 10 of Albritton. Uh, he ends up getting involved in it as we see here. He's involved in it. Comes right across him. Nowhere for him to go but he gets involved in it there. Um, so unfortunate for him but they end up making it through and just another first lap incident. Uh, it takes more cars out. All right, are you ready to roll once again here? See the 75. He gets a good restart once again. And all right, they were back. My apologies. Uh, you got the three Everett Motorsports cars racing for the lead here at Auto Club. You got Brian Wasserman in the 50. He's looking to make something happen. 81, Jeremy Horn, last night's winner. He's up in the mix now. The 92, he's up here. Brandon Bass, he's caught up to the field, but you got a two-car tango side-by-side side for the lead. A few cars working together, the 50 trying to help the 98 go around the outside of the 75. But they're all racing hard so far. 75 still to the lead, 98. He's going to be looking on his outside. He's going to look to the inside now, not going to be close enough, but they're all going to be... Battling through three and four. 
still the three Everett Motorsports cars. They're trying to, looking like they're trying to make it three wide to be out in the lead. Three car, about eight, <laughs> how many cars is this? I'm speechless right now at the moment. The 50 gets in the wall. The 98, he goes to the outside of his teammate in the 75. Oh, there's six cars under a blanket right now. Got to go for the wide camera angles to be able to see it all. 75 still trying to roll that bottom lane. Get around the 98. 98 just rolling that top lane, running the wall. Didn't seem to work out for him that corner, though. Everett Motorsports cars, one, two, three at the line on lap 20. Three wide entering turn number one for the lead once again. The 75, 98, they're both ripping the fence. The 51 gets to the 92's right rear. That's gonna loosen both of them up. The 81's gotta run now. They're almost gonna be four wide. Almost four wide on the back straightaway. But they're gonna stay three. Three wide for the lead once again. Entering turn number three. 75, he's gonna be clear on the 92. In the center, he's gonna use all the room he can to get around this battle going on. There's still a side. Oh, four rows. The 75 gets the bumper from the three. He almost loses it. Nice save by the 75. That stacks up that whole lane though. And they're going to lose a bunch of spots. The good save by the 75 with that new white and gold paint scheme. Pretty clean. I think that was uh, the three of Brandon Bass. He just got in the back of them. And uh, he got loose on it. But we got a battle for the lead between two teammates. Chad Adams and Brady Watts. They're going to be battling it here. It's coming closer to the stage. Still got three laps to go to the stage. It's going to be on lap 25. So we got three to go. See the three truck all the way to the bottom of the racetrack. 51, he's going to be rolling that outside. He's going to try to work around the outside of the three, trying to stay in line with his teammate, but also find a way around him. Three different lanes. Five different lanes between the top five, but the three all the way to the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to be almost to the 98's left rear, but not going to be able to. Everybody's trying to stay away. Don't let everybody get in the side draft. Don't let anybody get in the draft or the side draft or nothing. The 92 tries to push the three, gets him big, big wiggle. See them now. Chad still trying to roll that top line. Not much more he can do. Other than just kind of sit behind the 98 with the dirty air. He's going to have to make some big move happen though. Coming back to the white flag for the stage. He's looking on his back bumper to go on the nose of the 92 though here. You see on the inside of him is Nick Sipple. He's going to the bottom. Let's go on board with him while he tries to make that pass. You see how close they're getting with the side draft. The three to the bottom of the racetrack underneath the 51. Going to have to be careful with these older tires not to wash up. You see the 75 gets in that dirty air. He has to lift but he's going to be clear down the back straight away. Going to be battle for the lead. Brady ended up winning the stage last night. Looking to make it two for two. Heading into turn three. Middle of three and four. The three dives to the bottom on the inside of the 51. He's going to wash up. They almost make contact. The 75 is in the wall. And that's going to cost him big. He gets in the wall after he gets in the back. But Brady Watts is going to win the stage. Once again, two nights in a row. Let's go back and see. What happened on that? They like the 75 just got such a good run, just tried to stay in the throttle and got in the back of the three, but he ended up hitting the wall from it. But cost him a bunch with damage and all that, but his teammate, 98, ends up getting the win for the stage. Go ahead, interview him now. Brady Watts, you end up getting it done once again, two nights in a row, end up getting the stage win. Talk about a little bit about that battle. Um, 
for the win right there. One point. Thank you guys for four wide, but you end up making a making through and getting the stage win. Yeah, it was just a lot of team work there. Obviously, we had Chad and Nick up there, but uh, yeah, I don't know what Brandon was doing. He fully ran over Nick, but yep, it just fun battling with teammates. Glad to get Everett Enterprises uh, one and two, and uh, yep, see if this how it sets us up for the end of the race. Yes, sir. I know uh, you still got over going to have just under 50 laps to go when you get back going, and there's not going to be any more stage breaks. What's kind of your strategy uh, heading into those laps? Honestly, a very good question. I, I don't know the plan right now. I, I might be taking tires. I might not be. I think probably will take tires, though. All righty. We'll be watching. Good luck. Thank you. Brady Watts end up getting a stage two for two tonight. Or uh, two for two the last two nights. Um, had an incident right after the stage break. Uh, and it costed him right after the stage win. Then he ended up losing a bunch of spots. Um, for that. But as they all come onto pit road now. You see the field all rolling down. Everybody coming down pit road. Only a few cars staying out. That's going to be the 85 staying out. Uh, but they're all still going out here. The 85, 17, 28, they stay out. But getting down to the end of pit road. Ooh, two Everett Motorsports trucks. They make contact right there. Entering pit road. That's going to cost Brady. He ends up making quite a few. Have to back up. He's, wow, that's a big, uh. Big incident right there. Let's go back and watch that. What happened there on pit road entry? Just was over to the left, started getting into his box, and then Chad also was trying to get into his box. He started turning in. Then Brady turned in, just missed his box and didn't see it. That forced the Chad kind of into a bad spot. Now he's gonna have to. Doesn't look like he used a fascia pair. Just gonna take optional from it, and he's underway. But that uh could be a problem for him later in this race. Let's go ahead and watch the race off of pit road. Who ends up winning it? See Brandon and Nick. They both get their left sides up in the air at the same time. Clay, he rolls off pit road. Clay wins the race off of pit road. Then it's going to be Nick, Carol, Horn, Brandon. Looks like it'll be Brandon, then Thomas. But all in all, been a good race so far. They're going to be ready to rumble once again. Heading into the last 50 laps at Auto Club. Alrighty, so on this restart, the top three ended up staying out. The 19 got off of pit road first. Not sure what his strategy was, but he got off pit road first. And he's going to be starting fourth. Nick fifth, uh, and Brady Watts in... Chad Adams are going to be deep in the field now, but come back to uh, to the restart zone. It's going to be a dogfight, so we're going to be watching that 28 car. Starting third, 19 on his outside. Then you got Carol and Nick right there. Back to green for the restart on lap 30. It's going to be 45 laps to go here till the end. Nick already going to look to the bottom of the racetrack, heading into turn number one on them fresh tires. Ends up going to work for him. The 92, he's loose. He ends up saving it. Everybody checks up from it. A few cars getting into trouble from it, but everybody seems to be rolling good at the moment. Back up to the front, though. 85, 73. 75 got the newest tires. So is that 81. So... Jeremy was fighting with Chad all last night. Ended up getting it done off a of fuel mileage kind of deal. Now he's got a new competitor, Nick. He's still trying to find his way around the 85. But Timothy, he's going to lead that lap. But Nick still trying to find his way to the front. And so is that 81. He also has to get around the few cars in front of him to... Uh, to get it done. Anthony going to go for a big slide job right here on Nick and it's going to work out for him for the moment. All going to be fighting. Nick going to be clear on the 81. He's going to try to sneak it three wide in the middle or look like it. These guys are doing pretty good staying out on them old tires but 
We're going to be watching how well it works for them. You see that's where the tire comes in, about center to exit. It's going to be three wide for the lead on the front straightaway. Who's going to lead this lap? It's going to be Anthony. Anthony leads lap number 32. Shout out to Anthony's mom. and she watches these or like to watch these. So Anthony's mom, hello out there. But he's rolling that top line with that left side damage, and it's working out for him so far. But Nick's still trying to fight on them new tires. So it was the 50, the 81. All these guys are in the battle right now on them new tires. 28, the furthest one on them old tires to stay out. He's ended up looking like he might lead two laps in a row now. They're all still side by side for third, almost three wide for third that time. Anthony going to lead that lap once again. Brandon, he's going to try to shoot through the middle and get to the lead. And he will. He'll have a nose on Anthony heading into turn number one. He's going to be maybe not clear on the 50 yet. It was close, but he's going to be clear exit of turn number four. Still got the 75. He's trying to fight his way on the bottom of the 19. Gets into the wall there. That kind of checks up the 98 and the 5. But the three to the point on lap 33. Still got a few cars in the back. Brady Watts, after the stage win, he's trying to fight his way back to the front now. He's underneath the 28. He's trying to look for fifth at the line that time. He ends up getting it, but still got the three car or the two cars in front of him are the guys he was racing before the stage. So. They're going to, he's going to have to figure out a way to be quicker than them and uh, beat them in this last part. You know, Jeremy was quick last night. Ended up being able to pull it out on fuel mileage. To the 81, hard and aggressive to the bottom. Big move to the bottom, trying to use them tires. 75, a little bit more reserved. He's chilling just right here. Going to try to get a little bit of help from his teammate in the 95 to push him. But at 81, sure looking strong. He's up Trying to catch the 50, the, and the three for that lead battle. Biggest move of the race right now is Brian Wasserman up 17 spots in P number two. So Brian doing a well of a job uh, gaining all those spots back. Little underdog too. Haven't talked about him much. He's pretty new to the league, but the five truck, Thomas Laverd, he's in this battle for the top five spot right behind two Everett Motorsports car or trucks. He's going to go with the 98 down the front straightaway. But as we talk about that, we're going to go back to the lead battle now. They're racing pretty hard for it, but it's going to be fun to watch. You see the three out front, got the 50 and the 81 right behind them. See Brandon trying to stay low, break the draft. Don't let the 50 get any draft. You got his teammate in the 81 behind him. It's three Chevys out front here at Auto Club so far. But these guys looking for all the room. Gonna use all the track. That's what it's there for. So they're all trying to figure out what lane to use at the moment to get up to the front. You see the 75, he's kind of falling back a little bit more. You heard uh him say he's going to just try to save tires and um, all that. So that must be his strategy, just trying to back off just a little bit, save tires. Laverne, he's still uh, right behind Brady. Brady, he's going just a little bit. He's up to fourth once again. So he's slowly fighting his way back through the field. Go back to the lead battle, though. Still nothing going on. Still a battle for second, though. Brian and Jeremy battling for that second place spot. Who's going to be the one to go after that leader? They're still side by side. This track definitely has some of the best racing on the circuit and on the schedule. Tomorrow is going to be wild with all the uh, everybody showing up, all the competitors, and uh, all the three wide points battles, everything going on with it. It's going to be fun to watch tomorrow, but you still got this battle going on for that P2 spot. Jeremy seeming to be able to hold it off so far. But not through three and four. Just doesn't seem to be able to be able to make the move. 
He's back to underneath him again. These guys are having a blast out there, or at least I would. If I was in their position battling like this, be awesome to watch. Be doing. It's awesome to watch. Maybe not too fun to battle, knowing that three is getting a uh, getting away from just a little bit more each lap. So we go back behind them. You see the 98 trying to push the five. The 75 has to bail out on that one. They end up getting into it just a little bit. We go TV static cam. We're gonna go crank it up now. little flyby action of the field that time but a lot of cars are spread out you know still battle for that p4 spot with the 75 the 5 and the 98 98 drop back a few spots on that one 75 finally gets clear of the five and he's gonna be p number four as they cross the line that time so nick up to fourth he's gonna have to run down those leaders 1.7 in front of him I was going to talk about the difference in uh, difference in lanes. You see, the front three have been running the bottom pretty consistently all over the bottom. And then you got these few, fourth, fifth, and sixth. They've been running this uh, that high line and haven't been really leaving it. They've been kind of middle-ish to high, and the front three have just been pinning it on the bottom. So we'll see how much the line changes later in this race. Um, but we see these guys out back. See the 28, he's in pit road to 85. He ended up staying out. Um, didn't seem to uh, be working out for him. Uh, it's definitely not going too great. But they ended up staying out. Doesn't seem to be working out. You see Anthony leaving pit road now. Uh, maybe just a strategy call on their part. You got Ted Deckard going underneath the 10. Anthony Benda, he's going underneath. He's going to try to battle for that P number 8 spot. Field's pretty spread out now, all in all. Going to be watching to see the 92. He is a few laps down, unfortunately. He had to pit. Um, he blast pitted on lap 30. So, lap 27, everybody else pitted. He pitted one lap uh, after they went green. So, he is caught up in it. Um, which is unfortunate, but this battle is the best one on track right now. Looks like he might be able to get the job done in that 79 truck. But the 92 and 98, they're side by side once again. 92 is shown to be quick here. Last night was his first race with us, and so is... Uh, so he's showing uh, what he's got to uh, play with so far. Got a race... Cr got a lot of racecraft in that 92 truck so be fun to watch him in his first league race tomorrow night at 75 he finally gets clear though of the five once again draft still big here but that 81 not pulling away from too much you know that 81 seemed to be one of the quickest one um, but let's go on board with him and watch him run a few laps here I believe he's been saving laps, gonna uh, save and fuel the last few laps now. 
as we see, doesn't seem like it. He's not saving at all. Don't think there's a lot of cars saving. I'm trying to listen to it. Let's see. I don't know if anybody is saving. Um, trying to look at it. Doesn't really seem like it. Maybe Dustin trying to do an earlier pit call um, to be able to save that fuel. See Brian all over the back bumper of the three still. He's trying to find his way around this uh, the leader in that three truck. Just hasn't been able to pull it off so far. Here I'm pretty maybe there he did save. Let's go back. Does he save a lot right there? No. He's still in it hard. They're still racing all over for uh, this battle. He's got to run on him now. What lane does he go? To the bottom. Underneath the three. Older tires seem to be prevailing last night. Prevailing last night. Will it do the same tonight? 50 still underneath him. Three's going to get back clear. So. Still the top lane on them older tires. They're uh, seem to be working out for them right now at the moment. Let's see what the strategy call is to get around them. You heard last night, Chad tried to put in one lap early to get out in front of the 81. And it uh, ended up working out for them. But for that, uh, ended up working out for them for those first few laps. And then... The tire wear and all that, just kind of saving fuel and different strategies ended up coming into play. But he ended up getting out first. So if these guys run, they're coming up on lap 50, so about 25 laps to go. I don't know how big their fuel tank is. Um, we did adjust the fuel for this race as it was a little low uh, last night. And we'll probably up it once more um, to kind of see what the fuel is um, and kind of the strategy for it. But... Uh, up it just one more so that we can guarantee a little bit not less fuel saving um, this race but still going to be a battle for the lead still battle and out back behind them between the 75 and 81 the 81 trying to save fuel maybe just a little bit like he did last night he saved enough to make it um, but Nick doesn't seem to be taking that same strategy He's all over the inside of the 81. We'll see him now. Is there side by side down the front straightaway? You see the nose of the 75. End up letting him go. Jeremy trying to say he's a little bit on the apron there, but no harm, no foul. He's trying to fight to save as much fuel as he can. Nick just on the go. Nick wasn't able to run last night, had something pop up, but he was able to learn from his teammates and kind of guess what his teammates told him. Um, so maybe he's not got the memo as much as these other cars that ran the last few nights, but he's just on the loud pedal, going as hard as he can. Trying to catch that front pack. Really nice paint scheme. He was actually uh, making paint schemes after the race last night. Got that Beatty and Sanders uh, logo on, the, on that B pillar. We got the Shoe Emporium, Everett Enterprise, Nick Shoe Emporium sponsored machine. The white and gold. Nick's kind of the uh, Nick and Chad make really good paint schemes, so they're making paint schemes uh, for that team. They'll be coming out with quite a few this season, so it'll be cool to see what different paint schemes that they got going on, different colors and uh, things like that. But Nick's still trying to go. 81 backed off behind him. Don't see much going on. A few cars. That was the three. The three has pitted. The three and 50 that time came to pit road. So we're going to have to be watching out for that. See where they're at. Um, when they leave pit road the next time. You see the 20. He's leaving pit road now. The 50. He stops in the box. Let's see who else comes to pit road. No one seems to be coming to pit road yet. You see the three stop in his box. Right sides go up. Left sides on the 50. 50 takes off. Who's got the better pit crew? Left sides go up on the three. When will it drop? They drop and they're dead even leaving pit road. The three almost inside on the 50. He's having to give that back, but the 50 gets out 
ahead of the three now. On lap 52, these two were the leaders before the pit stops. So after everybody pits, we'll see we'll see how it shakes out. But the 81, he's got to run now. He's the leader at the moment after uh, staying out for this long. We'll see what his strategy call is. If he's going to pit for them fresh tires this time, he is. He's coming to pit road this time, it looks like it. So he's coming to pit road. You got the five that stayed out. He's also coming to pit road this time. Got the 19. He's pitting this time. The, the two, Joey Keneally, the three. 3K of Joey Canelli. He's staying out on that on the racetrack, but the 81, he's come to pit road. A lot of cars coming to pit road this time. Different strategy calls from last night. You see Chad leaving pit road. He uh, was a little further back than he was last night. So maybe uh, he's just going to try to run it to the end, but it's going to be about 20 lap run on these guys or for these guys uh, when they leave their pit stalls and get going. Clay, a little bit. He oh. ended up making it up. He got into his box. Nope, he had to back up on that one. All right, well, the 81, he's leaving pit road now. We'll see where he is compared to the 50. There they go, right there. They leave right in front of him. See how much that gap has grown on that battle. But still, um, could be worse. I think the 81 on uh, qualifying times was a little bit better than them, so... Um, We'll be watching him. You got the Everett Motorsports truck. They both came out together. They pitted on lap 53. So two or a lap ago, they pitted um, with them. But it's all still a play for. Still got however much, about 20 laps to go. 20 laps when these guys cross the line. 20 laps to go. So it'll uh, be fun to see what the strategy and who can make it and who's going and who's going what where but still for the lead they're battling hard for the lead 75 truck he's trying to catch that 81 once again we'll go with his gyro cam on the 75 truck see what lane he takes to try to catch him I believe a little bit up ahead he ended up uh, He ended up dropping back a little bit further than I think, but it all cycled out now. Those two are still the leaders, um, and the top five are all within six seconds of each other. So who's going to run out? Who's going to make it? We're on board with the three at the moment. He's leading, or he's second in second place. Brian in the 50 out front with the three hot on his tail trying to catch him. Go back to the 75 and watch him. He's underneath the inside of the 81, though. 81 lets him go, gets him behind him. I like the championship battle. Ooh, you see they get loose, but little announcer prediction for uh, the end of the season. Brady actually been having a solid race last night and tonight, but um, I think he could be in contention, but I think it's going to come down possibly to least two and Chad. Chad just to make mistakes if he doesn't make one in the in the races. I think he'll be up here and it'll be kind of the three um, for the championship. But I think it'll come down to these two. Um, they're going to be battling hard to fight for that prize of custom die cast of their race truck of their choosing during the season. Pretty cool prize for the champion. Um, which is Awesome. I know when I was racing, there wasn't no prizes like that, so it's pretty cool to uh, see from these guys or see that they're getting prizes like that. But we we'll go back to the leader, Ryan Wasserman. He's up to the point. Um, a little close on the camera there, but he's up still in the lead. The three trying to catch him, do with whatever he can to catch him. Um, See the three a little bit loose maybe right there. Right front damage just a little bit on the helmet cam, but trying to do all he can in these last 15 laps. Next time they cross the line. See two different lanes, the 50 in the middle, the three on the bottom. Big 
50 trying to break that draft. He's got a second lead, but he's still trying to break that draft. And they're still battling hard uh, throughout the field. But the 81 has sat behind Nick, maybe trying to save a little bit of fuel. Don't think a lot of cars are saving too much fuel. Um, Got ran down. These two are going to be battling for the lead. That's kind of my predictions up for the championship. But at the moment, that 50 and the 3 have pulled a gap on what I thought was the two best in the field after practice and uh, their qualifying runs and things like that. But doesn't look like at the moment. Looks like this 3 and the 50 are going to be battling for the win here. If nothing goes wrong. Quick pause here, and we're going to go back, crank it up. See these two still battling hard. They haven't given up right here between the 81 and the 75. Still 12 laps to go. It's about getting down to crunch time. These two are trying to put themselves in position to if a yellow does come out to, uh, to put themselves in the spot that they want to be in. See the 95 has dropped back from these two just a little bit. Maybe the tires falling off on that 98 on that 98 truck, but as they go around the 20, the lap car of Colin. Colin, pretty new to Irison, just trying to learn. He's been last few weeks running with us, and he's definitely improved um, a lot. So, Colin, if you're watching this, definitely have improved uh, a decent amount. So, shout out to shout out to Colin. He's definitely been doing good, but still a battle for third. It was pretty tense a few laps ago. Now I think tires have come into a factor. I think that's what it'll come down to. These guys started off with three sets of tires. Don't know if they used them or anything like that, but Brandon, Brandon and Brian pitted on 52. Nick on 53 and Jeremy on 54. So two lap fresher tires for Jeremy compared to the front two. And then Nick stuck in the middle. So one lap fresher tires for... Uh, Jeremy doesn't seem to be helping Nick or uh, hurting Nick too much in the Everett Enterprise truck. See, just dirty air is such a big thing in these trucks. If you can kind of put the put your car right in front of their car as they go through the corner and take as much air as you can away from them, it'll definitely help. Um, help you pull away as much as possible but we still see nothing really going on too much right now this is the most exciting battle on the track it's pretty it's gotten pretty strung out I won't lie definitely restarts and first run is fun and then it comes down to uh, races like this on who's gonna make it who's able to make it who's gonna be where I don't know 
if any of these guys are going to make it, if they're all going to make it. Not sure on strategy or anything like that. I might uh try to get some recruiting for the booth. I think I might try to get uh, a crew chief in the booth with me and uh, see what he kind of does uh, or see if he's able to help much. But that would be much obliged if someone did. Trying to figure out strategy and stuff like that. But still the 50 out front. See the three behind him three seconds. So he's lost a, quite a bit of time on the 50. And you got the 75 and the 81 closing up on him. Lap 67, going to be led by Brian. A big lap to be led. Means a lot to the members of the WTF Racing League. Mostly OGs, obviously Doug's number. So a big lap to lead. Kind of a meme number, but uh, Doug's number. So we always like to honor Doug and um, give him a shout out any way that we can. See the three truck. He's trying to save, I believe, as much as he can. He might not be able to make it now. He may be trying to back off and save, but you got the 75 and 81 out back behind him pushing hard to try to catch him. As much as they can. We'll have to see if the three saving any. Didn't hear none that time, so he's not saving one bit. 81 trying to force the, try to get the 75 to go around him see Nick going underneath the three now the three may have burned off his tires trying to stay on the back bumper of Brian as much as he can and these three battling for P number two on the track at the moment still four seconds behind Brian don't think they'll be able to catch him unless there's a yellow. Brian coming back to four to go this time at the line, but these three are battling hard. Then Mike looking in the shadows. He's back there in that 44 truck. He's getting a pretty nice view from uh, his cockpit watching this battle of the battle for uh, the win. He is a lap down, unfortunately, but Mike been improving every, every race, doing as much as he can. Hopefully he won't mess up this battle too much. See the 81, he's going to push tight. Mike just going to try to cruise around all these guys. They're all going to be side by side, or in a line now, down the back straightaway. Mike's going to be side by side with Nick to try to catch Brian and get his lap back. But Nick thought, tried to go to the bottom there, but Mike was there. The 81's going to go underneath him. We'll see where this, uh, how this ends up, the fight, if this will uh, matter a lot between them or no. Nick trying to stay in the draft of the 17. Not going to be able to, uh, or the 81's not going to be able to get around him, though. Still battling for second at the moment. Now all three of these trucks are going to be in dirty air with Mike in front of him for at least these next few laps. As you see how big it is, Nick ends up having to check up big. The three's going to get a run on him once again. The three almost hit the wall. And let's go back and take a look on that one. You see, he got in uh, as soon as he got in the dirty air. It's pushing, pushing, pushing. He's got nowhere to go. So is the 81, and they make contact in it, and that let the three go around uh, the 81. At least the 75 is trying to fight back as much as he can to try to secure that P2 spot. You know, these two got into it just a little bit earlier into turn number one, but they're racing pretty clean right now. The 75 on the three's door. Brian going to come back to the line with two to go, but we're focused on this battle because this is the best battle on the track for position especially. That's a big uh, 
Awesome to see these three battling. They've had their ups and downs kind of all race, but see the three underneath the 75, the 75 pinch and the three hard right there. But your leader in the 50, he's crossing the line for two to go. Brian Wasserman, been in the league for a long, long time. Hasn't been able to run as much as he probably would like, but been off and on a few uh, the past, uh, past weeks, and they are... Man, they're battling hard out back <laughs> still. Uh, 81's kind of come back in the mix. 75 out front of them, though. But Brian, looks like this battle's kind of died down. But Brian, been off and on. Coming back to the white flag. He's got Mike right behind him. But he's coming back to the white flag this time. At the line, he's going to unlap himself. Almost unlap himself. But Mike, going to be clear, he's going to unlap himself on that move. But Brian, been off and on the last few few weeks. Um, not able to make it. Said work was kind of getting to him and a little bit busy. But Brian, showed his speed tonight. Saved enough fuel to make it, it looks like. Going down the back straight away. Can he make it? One more corner. Through three and four. Brian Wasserman, looks like he's going to have enough to make it. Brian Wasserman, he's going to end up winning it. Night number two, practice night number two at Auto Club. Awesome run for Brian. Started way deep in the field. And he ends up getting it done tonight. Awesome, awesome race for Brian. You see these ba this battle ended up going to Nick then Brandon, then Jeremy, then Brady with a solid top five. Clay in sixth. So great battle between these three uh, for the win. You see them all congratulating uh, Brian. But Brian, the star of the night, ends up getting it done. Awesome battle between them. We'll go ahead and interview them now. Brian Wasserman, you end up getting it done tonight. Congratulations. Um... I was a little worried about fuel. Was fuel a uh, concern at all during this race, or was it just kind of balls to the wall and just run it out? No, I uh, made that last pit stop, figuring I'd have about a lap, lap and a half left of fuel, and that's exactly what I had crossing the checkers. So it was uh, just what I thought it'd be. Just enough to save it. Congratulations. I know you haven't been showing up as much as uh, as much as you uh, would like, probably, but you end up being that. fast every time uh, you show up. Talk to us a little about, uh, are you going to be able to make it tomorrow and then talk about your race, uh, kind of what you were thinking during it? Yes, sir. I'll be, uh, I'll be in it tomorrow. And, uh, you know what, man, I was just trying to, uh, try not to burn up the tires there in that first, that first 10 lap, uh, part portion of the run. Uh, you abuse them in that first five, 10 laps and then, uh, then they're not worth a shit the rest of the race. So that's the key. Baby them a little bit in the beginning and then it pays off in the end. Yes, sir. Definitely pay it off for you tonight. Congratulations. Who would you like to thank? Me. <laughs> <laughs> WTF. I like it. That's uh. Now I got no sponsors, but uh, I don't blame you. I'm the same way. So, um, congratulations on uh, on the win. Hopefully, uh, be interviewing you same time tomorrow night. Ten four. Appreciate it. Brian Wasserman, your race winner tonight, ends up getting it done. The biggest mover of the race as well. Um, he ends up 17, 18 spots, um, as you see in the bottom left. He ends up 17 spots up. Um, now we're going to go ahead and interview our second place runner, Nick Sipple. Nick, got you up here now. Nick ended up P2, not what you wanted, but a solid run. Probably had one of the funnest races all race. Ended up battling every lap, it seemed like. Talk to us a little bit about the battle you had with the 81 and your strategy in that last part. Uh, well, strategy was, I, I don't know why, I thought we weren't going to be able to make it because the fuel was, I don't know, it was kind of weird. Um, but I mean, other than that, it was fun. Uh, battle with the 81 was fun. Unfortunately, you know, I got tight. Kind of got up on the wall and he ran to the back of me, which kind of hurt him, helped me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, yep, sorry, but is what it is. Uh, fun race overall. This uh, strategy didn't work out for us, so hopefully it will uh, tomorrow night. 
Yes, sir. You seem to uh, be really quick tonight. Obviously showed your speed. Wasn't able to run tonight, but got that truck looking nice and nice and clean. What's kind of your thoughts heading into uh, tomorrow night? What have you learned through these last few nights uh, on practices? Well, I can't tell you that, but uh, I do want to thank Nick Shoe Rental Emporium, uh, you know, Greg Everett, Everett Enterprise, Everett Motorsports, all the guys. It was fun. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can, you know, get it done tomorrow and get some points. Uh, hopefully our team does, you know, better. We got a little unfortunate, but, yeah. All righty. Well, good luck. Uh, good run tonight. Good luck tomorrow. I'm sure we'll talk before then, but uh, hopefully have a monstrous battle for the win there uh, tomorrow night. And uh, good hopefully luck. Hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> I know for your sake you probably ain't hoping so, but uh, for the for the broadcast and for everybody watching probably thinking or hoping so. uh yeah, but good run tonight. Congratulations. Yep. Right. Nick Sipple ends up getting in P number two. One more interview. That'll be Brandon Bass. The end of that run. Brandon, you end up P3 at the end of this deal. Had a monstrous run, uh, had or a monstrous battle between the 75, you, and the 81 later in that race. You... The 75-81 seem to be battling the entire race, but end up P3 in it. Talk to us a little bit about what your strategy was or what you thought uh, during the race. I mean, that was just uh, with the fuel strategy. It was pretty simple, cut and dry. You know, you just get, get enough to go to the end after the halfway point. And, and once we made it to that that stage, then uh, it was just try to keep the truck clean, and I failed at that. So me and Brian, we kind of worked together a little bit trying to stretch out the lead once we were able to separate from Horn. And uh, and Nick and uh, he beat me off pit road, so it was work to be done for the remainder of the race, and just drove too hard coming off a of two and flat the wall, and that kind of packed up my truck the rest of the run, and that was basically all she wrote. And I knew that uh, I was going to try to run Nick a little bit hard. I got into him early on that uh, stage race, and I guess he was displeased the remainder of the race on that. And he he chopped back at me later on in the race, and. Kept on digging and then raced hard there at the end. I, I had a blast with it. Hopefully he could say the same. I mean, it was a good time. It definitely looked like it was a, it was a blast. I had a lot of fun watching and announcing it. It was a best battle all race, it seemed like, between you, the 81, and the 75. Tonight you seem to have a lot of speed qualified pretty well. Um, what's kind of your thoughts after uh, – these last few practice nights and running, what have you learned and uh, what are you thinking heading into tomorrow night? Definitely got to take take care of them tires, got to nurture them things, uh, especially the second half of the race. The stage win race is going to be exciting, I think. That's where a lot of people might lose their fast repair coming to that one. So I'm kind of debating in my mind whether or not to go for the stage win or not, but it's uh, going to be a going to be a dogfight all day tomorrow, I think, man, especially to the stages. Yes, sir. It'll be fun to watch. Excited. Uh, tomorrow night at 8.30 Eastern. Going to be live and ready to roll. So, Brandon, congratulations on P number three. Um, see you tomorrow night. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, WTF Racing. Yes, sir. All righty. All righty. That's going to conclude tonight. Uh for the WF racing practice race that we had. Um, had fun once again. Auto Club still seemed to be obviously Daytona hard to judge with that super speedway, but I'd say Auto Club's been having some of the best battles and races uh, of the season so far. Practice races and things like that. This one may have been one of the best with fuel and all that coming down to it, but Brian Wasserman, he ends up getting it done and uh, wins in that Bass Pro Shop scheme. So awesome uh, for him. Just that one man show. One man show. He ends up getting it done. But if uh, you guys enjoy, uh, we'll be live once again, 8:30 Eastern on Tuesday night or tomorrow night, probably tonight when I post this video. But um, it'll be uh, it'll be a fun fun race, race number two of the season. So if y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe. See y'all in the next one. Goodbye.